Good morning. My name is Deborah Rutter, and I have the distinct pleasure and honor as serving as the president of the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts. It is a privilege for me to greet all of our distinguished guests here today. It feels like a reunion of people who have come to know one another and the pleasure of working together. Ambassador Sasai, Ambassador Kurita, our honored guests from Japan, Ambassador Kenny, representing our US delegation. Thank you all for being here and welcome to the Kennedy Center for this very special ceremony. It really represents the true mission of our organization and our friendship with Japan. You all know very well, but let me just remind you that the Kennedy Center was established by Congress to serve as the National Center for the Performing Arts. Four decades later today, it is a living celebration of excellence in the performing arts and a beacon for artists and audiences from around the globe to engage and experience music, dance, theater, opera, all of the arts at the highest level of expression. In addition to our role as a cultural organization, we are also a living memorial to President Kennedy. Through a commitment to excellence and access and a dedication to cultural diplomacy, the Kennedy Center celebrates the legacy of our 35th president who left those ideals for our nation and our world. President Kennedy held an unwavering commitment to the arts as well as to peace and friendship amongst all peoples. These are the ties that bind us as all as citizens of the world and what motivates us most directly at the Kennedy Center. President Kennedy said, partnership is not a posture, but a process, a continuous process that grows stronger each year as we devote ourselves to common tasks, a perfect representation of what we are here today to do. The celebration, of the blue star of life. I'm really excited about seeing this thing because I haven't seen the reality yet. The celebration is an embodiment of such a partnership and such a process. For all of us at the Kennedy Center, it is an opportunity to recommit to an enduring friendship with the people of Japan. We stand now in the atrium of the Terrace Theater, an exceptional venue for music, dance, and theater noted worldwide for its intimacy and acoustics. It is truly my favorite theater here at the Kennedy Center. It was completed four decades ago with a generous gift from Japan. Audiences have enjoyed performances in this theater and as a direct result of that generosity. We can never say thank you enough. Many of these performances are highlighted preeminent uh, Japanese artists, including the Mansuko no Kai Kyojin Company, the choreography of Joe Kanamori, and a memorial, a memorable tribute to the musical genius of Toro Takamitsu. In the intervening years, the ongoing gestures of friendship and generosity of the Japanese people have been the highlights of the Kennedy Center's rich and dynamic history. The vase which we are honored to accept today is an exquisite work of art. At least that's what the pictures have told me. I haven't seen the reality yet, but it looks pretty extraordinary. It is a symbol of friendship, and that is something that we cherish today as much as we have four decades ago when we inaugurated the Terrace Theater. For generations to come, visitors to the Kennedy Center will pass by and admire the Blue Star of Life. They will recognize its obvious beauty and craftsmanship. Like this monument, the Kennedy Center, which is a living memorial, this face will be a living testament to a friendship that means so very, very much to all of us at the Kennedy Center. Ambassador Carita, I hope you will accept my most sincere thanks and gratitude, um, not only for this gift, but also for the expression of friendship. Congratulations to Maestro Shiraka, Shirakata Yasuhiko for his brilliant artistry. Ambassador Sasai, I hope you will allow me to thank you for your ongoing friendship to the center. You host events like the Opera Ball, 
You come to so many events. You are a great partner in support of artistic excellence in so many ways here at the Kennedy Center. Thank you. I've been in Washington just a short time. And as I like to tell him, every single time I see him, I think of him at least twice a day on my way to work and on my way home because I live just around the corner from the very beautiful ambassador's residence. We are neighbors, but most importantly, we are friends. For our guests, through our journey, though our journeys may have taken us down very different paths, I am deeply grateful that we have all, each and every one of us here today, found ourselves sharing this day. And what an appropriate day. This special day is the 98th birthday of President Kennedy. It is a very perfect day for us to be celebrating here together, and I'm honored to welcome you to be a part of that ceremony. It is now a pleasure for me to introduce our MCs for the ceremony, representing the United States and Georgetown University, Sarah Moore, and representing Japan and Toyo University, Kanako Kimura. Please join us. Good morning, everyone. I'm Kanako Kimura, a student at Toyo University. It gives me great pleasure to represent Japan as an MC in such a wonderful event. I promote this ceremony. I believe that this ceremony promotes international peace and the strong bond of USA and Japan. <coughs> I will do my best to facilitate this ceremony successfully. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Minasama, ohayo gozaimasu. My name is Sarah Moore, and I am a student at Georgetown University's School of Foreign Service. It is an honor today to join you in unveiling the Blue Star of Life and to celebrate the strong U.S.-Japan friendship. Now, for unveiling the porcelain artwork, I would like to call upon Mr. Yoshio Karita. Please come to the stage. His Excellency, Ambassador Kenichiro Sasae. Please come to the stage. Maestro Yasuhiko Shirakata, please. Ms. Sachiko Kuno, please. Mr. Takahisa Suzuki, please. And Japanese students, Ms. Utano Shinozaki, please. Ms. Andy Tominaga, please. Ms. Ai Nakazono, please. Mr. Ryusuke Suzuki, please. And Ms. Haruka Fukui, please. I would like to ask Ms. Deborah Rudder Ambassador Christy Kenny, Mr. Jeffrey Adler, and American students Kat Fisk, Andrew Chapman, Laura Anderson, and Jack Hanna to please join us to unveil the Blue Star of Life. Now, it is my honor to ask you to hold the rope in your hands, count down from three, and unveil a huge base, the blue star of life. Let's count together. Three, two, one, go! <laughs>
Please may be seated. At this time, permit me to call upon the leader of the TBSL delegation, Mr. Yoshio Karita, TBSL chairperson, to give a brief explanation of what TBSL is and what, T what it aims at. Mr. Karita, please. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor and pleasure for me to have this opportunity to uh, speak on behalf of the Japanese delegation. First and foremost, I'd like to express my deep thanks to uh, Ms. Deborah Luther, president of the J John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts, for accepting uh, this gift of the Blue Star of Life made by Maestro Yasuhiko Shirakata, well-known porcelain artist of Japan from Tobe Ehime Prefecture. In commemoration of the 160th anniversary of Japan-US Treaty, Treaty of Amity, uh, Mr. Shirakata is here uh, as a member of the delegation, so please uh, greet him. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Shirakata. We have thought it is most fitting to place the gift on this lobby because as you, as you know, uh, this terrace theater itself was donated by Japan 40 years ago uh, on, in, uh, on the occasion of the 200th anniversary of the founding of the United States. Our group, uh, bearing the same name, the Blue Star of Life, is a small voluntary group, very small in size, but big in its aspiration. And we, uh, uh, since 20 years ago, it has engaged in the activities to support the world peace and environmental activity of the United Nations. In facing the 160th anniversary of US-Japan diplomatic relations, coinciding with the 70th anniversary of the end of the Second World War, uh, we thought and we decided to widen the scope of our activity to work also for the promotion of stronger ties between the United States and Japan. And as a symbolic expression of that, uh, uh, we set an ambitious target of sending a gift of a huge um, ceramic base of the same size as the one uh, in the United Nations headquarters in Geneva and worked hard for its realization. This dream has come true thanks to so many people sharing the same aspiration. I wish to express my profound gratitude to uh, all those who have lent their helping hands uh, for its realization. Some of the names of the uh, supporters are recognized on the ceramic plates placed around the, uh, around the plate. Uh, not here, I think. <laughs> Actually, there, there will be three ceramic uh, plates uh, recognizing various names. Uh, but uh, also, uh, the, I think that we uh, uh, I also uh, wish to thank for those whose names are not mentioned here, so many people's names, 
for the support and encouragement, without which we have never been able to have this celebration today. And in that connection, I would like to uh, take this opportunity to pay our particular tribute to Dr. Sachiko Kuno, um, well-established medical scientist and uh, co-founder of the S&R Foundation, for her most generous support, which came in a very crucial moment and led our project to a successful goal. Thank you very much indeed. In concluding, we sincerely hope that this giant globe called the Blue Star of Life will stay in the great center of art and culture of the United States as a symbol of friendship between our two countries and of our common goals of promoting world peace, a good environment of the earth, and, and um, uh, further strengthening of mutual understanding of young generations. From this symbolic base, we will keep working for these objectives for many years to come. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Karita. We are honored that Ambassador Christy Kenny from the United States Department of State is joining us today to mark this special occasion. Ambassador Kenny serves as Deputy Assistant Secretary for Diplomatic, uh, Public Diplomacy and Public Affairs in the Department's Bureau of East Asian and Pacific Affairs. She holds the department's highest diplomatic rank of career ambassador and has served as United States ambassador to Thailand and the Philippines. Ladies and gentlemen, Ambassador Kenny. Good morning, everyone. It's an extraordinary day to celebrate a great friendship between two countries and also the great cultural contributions of the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts. I've grown up in Washington, and so we, we spent our time looking at what was coming next to the Kennedy Center, what ballet, what theater, what music would be here. And Japan has been a contributor to this cultural icon in Washington, D.C. since the very beginning. This is not only an auspicious day, the birthday of our former president, founder of this center, but it's an auspicious year to recognize U.S.-Japanese friendship and our cultural respect and warmth between the countries. Earlier this year, we had the great pleasure of welcoming Prime Minister Abe to Washington, where he had the pleasure of hearing at the White House some American music. And now here, we have the great privilege yet again of celebrating Japanese cultural contributions and artistry as the cultural relations and diplomacy between our two countries and our peoples continues to flourish. I'd like to thank Ambassador Karita and Ambassador Sasai for their continuing contributions to this great cultural center in my hometown and our nation's capital, and assure you that every time we see this, every time we come to a performance here, we will think of the beautiful artistry, we will think of our Japanese friends here in Washington, and our amazing nation filled with Japanese friends in Japan. Thank you very much for being a part of our culture, and thank you very much for the great friendship between two wonderful peoples. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Kenny. Now it gives me great pleasure to call upon His Excellency, Mr. Kenichiro Sasae, the Ambassador of Japan to the United States of of America to give us a brief speech on this occasion. Mr. Ambassador Kenichiro Sasai, please. Uh, good morning, everyone. <laughs> it's rather rare for me to come to Kennedy Center in the morning time. <laughs> it's great. I feel great. <laughs> Scenes look different. but. Uh, 
So let me thank, first of all, uh, Miss Deborah Ratter. You are always a good friend and supporter uh, to this cultural exchange between Japan and the United States. And also Ambassador Christy Kenny, and uh, you are also a great friend to us and promoter. I always love being sitting next to you, whether it is dinner or whatever the occasion. And also Ambassador Carita, thank you very much for bringing this project into fruition. And also I want to thank uh, Dr. Sachiko Kuno uh, for the generous support to make this uh, reality. And also I want to thank students and, and, and both Japanese American coming to participate and to shed the light for the future potential of the uh, exchanges between the two nations. And I feel great uh, to be invited uh, to this uh, ceremony. Uh, first, uh, especially I want to thank uh, Mr. Shirakata uh, for creating this beautiful porcelain vase. I haven't seen this either before. I saw the picture and I couldn't imagine how big this was. I thought this was smaller, but this is actually more than uh, my height. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very impressive. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we all uh, wish our planet uh, was as peaceful and beautiful uh, as this space he has uh, created. And I think uh, ceramic is a very much fitting uh, me medium to represent the earth. Because the world peace and environment in, uh, in some way are as fragile as porcelain, which is what the, uh, this Blue Star of Life Committee realizes. And I want to thank them for their work promoting ideals that I think young people especially embrace. This porcelain vase is the latest connection between Japan and the Kennedy Center in a relationship that goes back to the center's founding. So let me express once again my country's gratitude to the Kennedy Center uh, for all it does to strengthen cultural understanding between our two great nations. And finally, I'd like to thank the young people who are here to help out today. It is not easy to get up in front of a bunch of adults and to say or read and uh, something. And I thank you for adding to the specialness of today. I'm so grateful for everyone's generosity and the gracious support. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. I would like to introduce my colleague at Georgetown, Kat Fisk, to speak. Kat Fisk is the Assistant Director of the School of Foreign Service Asian Studies Program. She received her BA in International Relations and East Asian Studies from the University of Toronto and her MA in Conflict Resolution from Georgetown University. Kat Fisk. Good morning. On behalf of the American Student Envoys, I'd like to thank Ambassador Sasai, Ambassador Karita, Ambassador Kenny, the Embassy of Japan, and the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts for this wonderful opportunity to participate, participate in this Blue Star of Life gift ceremony, commemorating the 70th anniversary of the foundation of the United Nations, as well as the 160th anniversary of diplomatic relations between Japan and the United States. Sarah, Andrew, Laura, Jack, and I have dedicated much of our academic pursuits to the study of Japan. And it is truly an honor uh, to, for us to represent students across the country who appreciate Japan as much as we do. Japan's relationship with the Kennedy Center dates back to 1971 with its first gift of the 3,000 pound Opera House stage curtain uh, celebrating the center's opening. In 1975, Japan then generously donated funding to the Kennedy Center for the construction of this terrace theater, which we are in. I couldn't think of a more appropriate and special home for the Blue Star of Life phase, a symbol of the continuing Japan-Kennedy Center relationship than where the friendship began over more than four decades ago, which I might add was well before I was born. <laughs> and speaking of which, I think back to my childhood in the 80s and 90s, and I'm amazed to remember how much Japan, uh, I was exposed to Japan, albeit mostly in the form of 
Sailor Moon and Totoro at first, uh, but the exports of Cool Japan certainly had an impact on my life. Um, but I realize now that global engagement, whether it be through soft power, international institutions, or security alliances, has been Japan's modus operandi for more than half a century. With its numerous environmental efforts, generous humanitarian aid contributions, and active participation in the United Nations, Japan continues to affirm its commitment to the betterment of the international community. And this is what the blue, uh, the blue star of life phase symbolizes to me. In this new century, the Asia Pacific region is seizing many opportunities while facing many new and ongoing challenges, including threats to peace and, uh, and the environment. The U.S.'s close relationship with Japan will be crucial to ensuring peace and prosperity both regionally and globally in the coming decades. Moving forward, the maintenance of this important relationship will rely increasingly more on rising young <coughs> leaders in both countries who have benefited from the numerous U.S.-Japan cultural exchanges and international initiatives which both governments have prioritized for many years. Some of those young leaders may be here with us today. And perhaps decades from now, uh, when these leaders look back on events like this one, they will be inspired to continue strengthening the U.S.-Japan friendship and furthering its partnership in the pursuit of a better world. Thank you. Thank you, Kat. Next, I call upon the student representative from Japan, Ms. Enri Tominaga. She is 19 years old from Tokyo, Japan. She is in the second year of Keio University. Ms. Andy, please. President John F. Kennedy once said, things do not happen, things are made to happen. This ceremony today is symbolic of the strong bond that the United States and Japan have created man over many years. The ceramic artist, Maestro Shirakata, was motivated to create and donate this person artwork through his experience as JLCB volunteer over 50 years ago. This is one of the examples which show the importance of accumulating many small steps. We couldn't have carried out this ceremony without the efforts of previous generations. I believe that it is the duty of young people to reinforce what previous generations have built up and the benefits will be visible to the future generation. I'm honored to be here today as a representative of the nation of Japan. I'm proud to be able to make a small contribution towards the ongoing, ongoing process of cooperation between our two nations. Japan has been assisting the United States in many areas as one of its closest allies. Both nations are currently facing new challenges and thus the cooperation between the two is essential. Now is the time for us to work together to achieve something greater using our uh, using our close ties as seen in cultural exchanges. The First Lady, Madame Michelle Obama, and the First Lady, Madame Aki Abe, have been making great commitment to the girls' education. We take for granted how fortunate we are to be able to go to school and get good education. In other parts of the world, girls are much less fortunate. Being the, highly, being the two highly developed nations, the United States and Japan, should realize the need to march hand in hand to continuously work on this issue. By working together, we can give our less fortunate sisters more opportunities than they now have access to. I dream of the world without disputes, the world every girl can get good education. The United States and Japan have been cooperating to contribute to the world for many years, and I hope our two nations a um, strong and irreplaceable bond of the collaboration will get even stronger. In order to achieve this goal, we, the young generations, need to work hard. By holding the torch, about, by holding the high torch of strong will, bequeathed from previous generations, we will be solidly responsible to pass it on to the future generations. And I hope I can take part in achieving this. Just by standing here today, 
speaking to in person, it's, a, it's, a, it's itself a small contribution I can make to our nation's continuing relationship. Remember, just as President John F. Kennedy said that we have the power to make this the best generation of mankind in the history of the world, or make it the last. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Next, we are honored to have several greetings sent to us for this occasion. I invite Ms. Utano Shinozaki to first join us to read a message on behalf of the First Lady of Japan, Mrs. Akie Abe. Utano, please. Hello everyone, I am honored to read the message on behalf of Mrs. Abe. It gives me great pleasure to offer a few words of hearty congratulations on the occasion of donating the porcelain made glove, the Blue Star of Life, to the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts in Washington, D.C. I would also like to pay my sincere respect to all the people concerned who contributed to this wonderful event. I understand that the effort of the Blue Star of Life project aims at conveying a significant message of the importance of world peace and environmental conservation to use the next of the next generation to come. We all are living on the earth while born and growing up in a different environment, but all of us are sharing a common destiny on this earth as co-inhabitants. We all should bear in mind that it is not an ideal, but the way we ought to be. Overcoming the difference of ideas, principles, and interests among ourselves, we can be together. Today is the day to reaffirm our will to realize peace in the world and infuse it into the blue style of life. I will do my best to my pass on a better future to younger generations and they can step forward in their lives full of hopes and promises. I would like to close my remarks by wishing you all continued good health and happiness for many years to come. Akie Abe. Thank you. Next, I would like to invite Mr. Jeffrey Adler, Public Affairs Assistant Attaché at the United States Embassy in Tokyo, to read a message on behalf of the United States Ambassador to Japan, Caroline Kennedy. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of Ambassador Caroline Kennedy, it's a great honor to join you today for the presentation of the Blue Star of Life to the Kennedy Center for Performing Arts. I was just with Ambassador Kennedy earlier this week at a conference for international education in Boston, Massachusetts, where she was promoting stronger cultural and educational ties between Japan and the United States. She was so excited that the Blue Star of Life was being donated to the Kennedy Center. She sends her regrets for not being able to join us today, and also this special congratulatory message that I'll read to you now. Thank you for your kind and meaningful gift of this beautiful globe-shaped porcelain vase, the Blue Star of Life, to the Kennedy Center. The symbolism of this vase, an appeal for world peace and environmental conservation, captures the best values, hopes, and dreams of the American and Japanese peoples. The tradition of having students place small stones into the vase adds special meaning to today's ceremony. In Japanese, the word ishi has two meanings, pebble and commitment. Thus, 
the pebbles in today's ceremony represent the rock solid bonds of friendship between our two countries and a commitment from American and Japanese students to sustain international goodwill and exchange moving forward. It is particularly fitting that the Kennedy Center will house the Blue Star of Life. The Kennedy Center has long served as a showcase of Japanese culture to American audiences, and we all enjoy the center's beautiful terrace theater thanks to the generosity of the Japanese people. Once again, thank you to the Blue Star of Life organization. I very much look forward to adding a pedal of my own to the vase during my next visit to the Kennedy Center. Ambassador Caroline Kennedy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Adra. I would like to next introduce Mr. Hajime Takeuchi, Chief Representative at the Japan International Cooperation Agency, USA office, who is with us today to share with us a message from Ms. Sadako Ogata, former United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees and former President of the Japan International Cooperation Agency. Mr. Hajime, please. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and congratulations for this special donation. I would like to present a message from Ms. Sadako Ogata. It gives me special pleasure to join you today, sending our heartfelt congratulations to the John F. Kennedy Center, Washington, D.C., at the un unveiling ceremony of the Blue Star of Life. This special donation from Japan to the United States on this auspicious occasion marks the historical ties of amity and friendship between our two countries. It is a masterpiece of work produced by Mr. Yasuhiko Shirakata, a distinguished ceramist and a former Japan Overseas Cooperation Volunteer, JOCV. This is a great moment and a great achievement. In my capacity as a former president of the Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, the organization responsible for managing the JOCV. I am proud to say bravo to the really impressive feat that JICA volunteers have achieved. I also wish to express my gratitude to Ms. Deborah F. Flatter, President of John F. Kennedy Center, and, and to all those involved on the Japanese and US side to bring this fruition, this wonderful donation work across the Pacific Ocean in this memorable year. It is my hope that uh, the Blue Star of Life will attract a great deal of attention from all the visitors to this prestigious and culturally significant center and inspire them as a shining star symbolizing world peace, friendship, and conservation of the planet Earth. I would also like to take the opportunity to pay my respect to the US Peace Corps and the JOCV for their dedication and commitment in carrying out their missions over many past years. I express my sincere hope that the cooperation and collaboration between the two organizations will be further strengthened in the future. May 29, 2015, Sadako Ogata, former president of Japan International Cooperation Agency, former UN High Commissioner for Refugees. Thank you very much. Please join me next in welcoming Andrew Chapman, my fellow classmate at Georgetown University School of Foreign Service. Andrew will be reading a message shared with us by the Peace Corps. Good morning, everyone. I'm honored to read this message on behalf of Carrie hessler Redelet, the director of the Peace Corps. On the occasion of the 160th anniversary of Japan-US Treaty of Peace and Amity, the Peace Corps is pleased to participate in this distinguished program and to celebrate its participation with the Japanese Overseas Cooperation Volunteers, JOCV. Since 2005, in over 34 countries around the world, the Peace Corps and JOCV have been sharing best practices on technical and educational training 
for volunteers and counterparts and supporting community-based projects where our volunteers serve. We share with JOCV a mission of peace and friendship through volunteerism and look forward to expanding our cooperation. Over the past several months, we have renewed this collaboration through a commitment to advance girls' education on the ground in countries around the world through the Let Girls Learn initiative. This beautiful work of art being donated today is a reminder of the simplicity and beauty of collaboration and friendship. We look forward to continuing our work toward this noble goal with our JOCV colleagues. Sincerely, Carrie Hessler Radelet. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew. Finally, I would like to invite Ai Nakazono to share with us a message from Ms. Fumiko Hayashi, Mayor of Yokohama City, where the Japan-US Treaty of Peace and Amity was concluded in 1854. Ms. I, please. Good morning, everyone. I'm very happy to read the message of Paul Fumiko Hayashi, Mayor of Yokohama. The Japan-US Treaty of Peace and Amity was concluded in 1854, which led the beginning of official friendly relations between the United States and Japan. Last year marked the 160th anniversary of this conclusion, and this year marks the 70th anniversary of the end of World War II. On behalf of the city of Yokohama, where the Japan-US Treaty of Peace and Amity was concluded, I would like to offer my congratulations on the occasion of this ceremony during which Japanese side donated to the American side a globe commemorating these important events. Following the conclusion of Treaty of Peace and Amity, the United States and Japan concluded the Japan-US Treaty of Amity and Commerce in 1858 which led to the opening of the port of Yokohama to foreign trade in 1859. Later in 1957, the city of Yokohama entered into a sister city agreement with the city of San Diego in the US, when our city was in the midst of economic growth, and we will soon see the 60th anniversary of this relation. The city of Yokohama would like to continue to invest its effort into deepening even further the friendship between the citizens of the United States and the citizens of Japan. Fumiko Hayashi, thank you. We have reached the conclusion of our speaking program. To end this ceremony, we will conduct a pebble ceremony. The original vase housed at the European headquarters of the United Nations at the Palace of Nations in Geneva contains a collection of pebbles from around the world. The Japanese word for stone is ishi. Ishi also means will in Japanese. These pebbles symbolize the will of the world to seek peace and conserve the environment. I invite the other American and Japanese students to join me and Kanako for a photo and for the pebble ceremony. Laura Anderson from Sidwell Friends School will lead the American students, and Ryusuke Suzuki from Tokyo University will lead the Japanese student delegation. Kat, please join me in the first group. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a ceremony to set the people into the base. I'm Ryusuke Suzuki, nice to meet you. From now, the state student from the both countries separate into three groups to set the papers to the base. The third group set into the base, actually. And the first and second group 
will hold the pebbles over the waves because of the taking photos. So, <laughs> let's begin the setting ceremonies. On the turn of the group, uh, I count down from three, please call together. So, uh, the member of the first group is Ms. Utano Shinozaki. And me, uh, myself. <laughs> Jack and Andrew, please join the second group. Please come to the stage, Ms. Andy <coughs> and Ms. Kanako. Laura, please join the third group. Ms. Fukui and Ms. Nakazono, please. Okay, I count down three, from three. Okay, three, two, one, go. <laughs> Thank all of you for cooperating and participating in our ceremony. I hope strongly that the friendship between the United States and Japan people keep lasting and the world peace. Thank you. This has been a very beautiful and memorable morning. Thank you all for joining us. I think our students did a wonderful job as MCs, so thank you so much. And to the extraordinary words that both the Japanese and American representatives offered was so powerful. Thank you. Your words uh, indicate and prove to us that our friendship will continue. We are extraordinarily proud, and as I have sat here for the last moments looking at this, it adds to the beauty of this extraordinary space. So I say thank you to Maestro Shiragata for a very, very beautiful work of art and for everybody who made it possible to have it here. To our good friends, thank you Ambassador Kenny for speaking so eloquently on behalf of all Americans. To our two friends, Ambassador Kirata, thank you so much. 
and to Ambassador Sasai. You have done so much for us, not just in sharing this work with us, but in your long friendship with the Kennedy Center. So please join us now for a little celebration. Every event like this needs a celebration. And please join us now in the Terrace Gallery. Thank you for being here. Arigato gozaimasu.